17 for 10 against the question is agreed by uh, two groups of members present. I declare the motion passed. Uh, Debates on motion with no legislative effect. Motion on keeping up with technology development and enhancing protection for people's privacy. Members who wish to speak, please press the request to speak button. I will call upon Dr. Priscilla Leung to speak and move the motion. President, I move that the motion as printed on the agenda be passed. President, since young, the elders would tell us, you know, don't fall for the uh, small benefits. Is it? Well, in English, we have a statement that free is never free. We all carry an octopus today. And we enrolled, signed up to the Octopus Re Rewards to save up points. We thought we had a bargain. In 2010, in the Octopus incident, it was exposed that since 2002, for eight years in a row, without the, our consent, they would uh, transfer the data to other company for profit purposes to the amount of $44 million. This incident caused a huge uproar. Today, technology is constantly evolving, and we have more than an octopus card. We all have a smartphone in which we can load a lot of free apps. For example, uh, email, and today in, a, in a Huawei, we have WhatsApp, social media. But do we know that when using this free technology, we have been providing them a lot of valuable personal information in their possession. And a lot of celebrities are uh, getting pregnant and they will upload a photo of their ultrasound scan onto their own Facebook. Well, in foreign countries, after the babies grown up and start complaining and want their photos to be taken down because after grown up these are considered a uh, privacy well about smartphones and also in the area of big data world someone have told me they went to trip trip to Taipei well somehow they're talking on their phone that they wish to uh, get buy air ticket and very quickly their own Facebook news feed have shown up an advertisement for the air ticket and hotel accommodations of their destinations so they're just ordinary people so they suspect that some of the apps have been recording their dialogue and passed on to come other organizations well back in the old days we need to fill in a form to sign up as a membership we know that our data will be passed on to others And thanks to the 2010, thanks to the octopus incident, that the P privacy ordinance have since made amendments. Well, recently I went to to the uh, PDBO office. Besides the 30 section 35 A B C D E, and the guidelines included also cover election, the el registration election office and how do we use uh, elections particulars and the, the uh, handling of the electors leakage incidents. So these are all guidelines and guidelines. If despite so many guidelines, to, so back in 2016, the 3.78 million of GC voters would disappeared along with the notebook computer and recently the 8,000 data sets have this 8,000 uh, voters information have also gone missing and the former Secretary for Justice Elsie Leung 
have been stolen in United Christian Hospital that have, they have somebody took the chip containing patient information home. And last year, the Cathay Pacific, 9.4 million passengers' information have been leaked. More intriguing that I'm also one of the victims. I received an apology from Cathay. And I was told that are you willing that we are proposing remedial measures about a one year of a identity surveillance program as compensation, and uh, that company in charge, well, it was in accused of uh, losing fifteen million of uh, users' information. Isn't that a joke? Well, Facebook last year it was exposed that it failed. Is uh, allows the third party to excessive collecting of users' information, and the Cambridge Analytics through Facebook have uh, conducted mind games to collect uh, 87 million users' information. It was rumored that it was cost. It was used by the election team by the President Trump. Well, Facebook is accused of violating the General Data Protection Regulation. They expect to be fined 1.6 billion U.S. dollars, and the Federal Trade Commission (FTC) to be fined five billion dollars, which is equivalent of a uh, five fifty-eight point eight billion Hong Kong dollars, which is the Almost the uh, last year's government surplus. The world's toughest privacy ordinance, which is would be the GBDR of EU, is enacted in uh, 2018 May, and breaches of this GBDR would be the four percent of the company's turnover, or even uh, two twenty million uh, euros. It stipulated that the personal information, the name, uh, personal identifier, and the location and cookie and IPs locations cannot be excessively collected. The user have the right to know and delete their own information. And the collection of personal information would actively seek the user's consent and cannot be uh, buried in very fine provisions. Even when the company are located outside EU, when it comes to the collecting and handling of EU users' information, they must adopt the uh, 20, uh, 2017 GDPR. And Hong Kong, EU is the third biggest partner of, of trading relations, and some low Hong Kong companies have been following the GDPR. Well, some part of the GDPR back in 12, 2012 amendments have been adopted. We stress the uh, consent. On Section 35 AD, if you, without the consent of the uh, own user, you cannot transfer it to the third parties or even for marketing purposes. So mainly, it was for direct marketing purposes. Um, silence does not equate to consent, and the data user cannot be over collecting user information. Thus, in 2017, well. Uh, uh, they have well, I thought the uh, pop vote by Mr. Benny Yu have been uh, suspected of uh, political campaigning. Thus, the Privacy Commission have issued a warning to them of banning them from using the database. The 2012 amendment have achieved this in, on achieved the opt in opt out. And even you give your consent orally, you within 14 days you need to confirm in writing, and the font must be large enough to be legible, instead of those uh, small print on the credit card statement. So people have no idea what they sign off to. So that is 2013 amendment. Today, this amendment is unable to cope with the data leakage scenarios, I, which I see is unacceptable. So you can up Cathay, uh, they went third party, and Octopus actually donated for that over $40 million in profit. Well, for the government, we can't accept that 3.78 million voters' information disappeared. Yet, 
no one you have to hold accountable. The security design is outrageous. Is Hong Kong capable of deploying high technologies or concentrating all in just a single computer that offer a reasonable safeguard our personal info? So in Hong Kong, while we are quite high tech, we in 1995, the data protection with what the PDBO is formally after EU information directive. And 15 years on, what our users may have fallen into the trap. However, are we using a diesel train on high-speed rail tracks? We have all these high technologies collecting information, yet our security have no way to handle them. And how about the penalties? Our privacy commissioner is a toothless tiger. The EU GPTR mandates that within 72 hours of the, uh, the discovery of the incident, and for the affected users, of, have, uh, 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 risk the house of notified the data subjects. Besides the time requirement, there are also a requirement on the um, disclosure, for example, possible consequences the uh, type and categories of class information involved and possible remedial measures. And without timely notification, the highest one will be 10 million euros. Or a uh, global turnover of 4% of the company, whichever the higher. So Hong Kong ha are, have a lot of catching up to do. Currently, while playing catch up, I told the president I went to Hangzhou, Shanghai. Currently, the AI, well, the scan have been collecting the personal information. This mega enterprises um, got hold of lots of information. So, what if the Google, Alpha, Gold, IBM, or even Alibaba well, got hold of such a close amount of information? For example, the online shopping sites or the AI computers and the robots. So after collecting so much personal info, they, the laws, we can't regulate them. So before we get to that stage, we need to think ahead. So Hong Kong's core values is the rule of law. So we must be forward looking to quickly amend the ordinance and also deal with the uh, people, uh, people's rights and the uh, public morals in the, the area of big data. So my recommendation comes in three parts. First, and, um, by drawing reference of EU PDTR to amend the PDPO expeditiously and requiring data users to notify the, power, the permission and data subjects of any data leakage incidents within the specified time frames and raising the penalty, and two, conferring on PCPD the power to exercise administrative penalties such as fines, and three, requiring all government departments and public and private organizations to review their policies and the deep of the security. Well, otherwise you can't cope with the uh, data theft capabilities. And four, with public education, including, like I mentioned. Well, some we have to cons consider the right of the unborn. Well, I couldn't pen to legislate it because uh, this is a matter between the parent and the children. Because we need to educate the people and the relatives and uh, when the, ch the privacy of those un of minors, including the ultrasound scan, we need to consider, we need to respect their privacy. And today I want to thank the members and other members. I support them in general principles simply, simply enhance my motion and the Mr. Alvin Yang's amendments have mentioned of the uh, ICSO, the Interception of Communications Surveillance Ordinance. I hope they won't devote too much on that. I would like to listen to his remarks, whether it would be too concentrate on the ICSO or the PCBO. But I appeal that uh, different parties to set aside differences to support this amendments and my original motion. I still submit. Enjoy the door. I now propose the question to you that the motion moved by Dr. Vesita Leon be passed. Three members will move amendments to this motion. This council will conduct a joint debate on the motion and the amendments. I will call upon members who will move the amendments to speak in the following order. Mr. Charles Moore and Ms. Elizabeth, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Kwok, but they may not move the amendment at this stage.
Um, Mr. Elvin Yang, I'd like to thank uh, doc, Dr. Priscilla Leung for moving this motion. This motion is about uh, safe, safeguarding our privacy, people's privacy. And I would like to talk about the interception of communication the surveillance ordinance. Dr. Leung is worried whether I will be digressing. Let me explain why the privacy and the ICSO are related. The ICSO uh, was amended in 2016 compared with the PDPO, which was amended in 2012. It was closer to time. But are the, is the newly amended ordinance uh, better or problem free? Well, at that time, I was not an electrical member. I understand that in 2016, when the ICSO was amended, it was equally controversial. At that time, Pandems and community organizations propose many CSAs to take into account technological development, and that there is instant uh, communication software has have been widely used for communication. But the amendments uh, did not take into account the coverage of these uh, software or to provide guidelines on the use of such softwares. So here, I would like to offer another perspective for consideration to see whether we should plug the loopholes. This is in my mind, Mr. President. When will the government propose uh, amendments to our laws and on what grounds? Uh, for example, let's take uh, the Fugitive Offenders uh, Amendment Bill. The government so thinks that uh, the, the ordinance should be amended uh, because of the need to uphold justice and public interest. President, there are so many laws in Hong Kong. There must be some outdated provisions or outdated. So what kind of uh, priority would the government accord to these uh, matters? Would uh, some amendments only be introduced with uh, community's consensus? And if we look at the FOO, why is this uh, ordinance uh, uh, amended uh, before others? But there's no consensus for FOO amendments. Is it that, that we require consensus to amend other laws before the government decide to do so? The uh, FOO amendment uh, is, uh, is an obvious uh, example. This, this is the same with ICSO. The amendments we introduced back then did not allow us to catch up sufficiently. The PDPO the referred to by Dr. Priscilla Leung have been uh, in involved in many cases of leaks of uh, personal data affecting people from all walks of life. Sh uh, can you say this is not a matter of urgency? The government should uh, deal with this uh, urgently. And the uh, typhoon season is approaching. And I want to move amendments on how we can deal with uh, uh, social, uh, deal with uh, disasters and accidents. For these uh, laws uh, which, re which have should be re amended because of the huge public interest in involved. So one wonders how, what's, what yardstick is adopted for by the government for legislative amendments. I'm not going to talk about uh, the implications of the uh, FOO amendments and whether on the 9th of June a lot of people will take to the street to protest. In 2016, when ICSO was amended, one of the more controversial issues was the definition of uh, interception of communication and also uh, telecommunication uh, devices. The government was of the view that uh, instant uh, communication software that did not fall into that def definition because interception of communication was about interception of uh, telephone com communication or letters. For the instant messaging the software such as WhatsApp and Telegram or WeChat, because of the speed, the high speed of communication, law enforcement agency cannot intercept the communication, and therefore these softwares cannot be covered by the definition of interception of communication. If that's the case, so how would the LEAs get the contents of these instant? Um, Messages. Well, in fact, they would ask the internet service providers to get the information required. 
the government says that uh, a, a warrant from the court will be required to do so. But if we look at the empowering provisions and standards in the ordinance, it's different from the uh, standards for a warrant to be issued. Although it's not uh, entirely the same, but the standards are higher in the ICSO. So last time it was not ex the definition was not expanded to coverage the seeking of uh, information from ISP by LEAs. That objectively was to allow LEAs to use uh, easier means to get our information transmitted over the internet. Let's uh, cast our sight back in 2016. Was it uh, at a time when we were just about, we would just enter the telecommunication uh, era? No. Was uh, in instant message uh, apps newly invented? No. Was uh, WeChat and WhatsApp the newly invented and introduced to the market? No. Or were, the, were, were people at the time rely heavily on uh, letters? No. When most people actually rely on instant messaging the software or app, the government uh, failed to cover those in the amendments. So logically, uh, there are only two possibilities. First, the criminals who only use the letters or the telephone communication or even the dogs to th communicate. Secondly, the government uh, leave, left that as a loophole deliberately so the LEA could uh, get the uh, information of, of uh, communication easily. If we want to cover the major areas envisage in the ordinance such as letters and uh, t and telephone communication, then why is it that LEAs in recent years have been uh, seeking information more uh, from the servers or ISP? The figures don't tell lies. According to Mr. Charles Mark's uh, uh, question and the answer provided to his question, the government has Have made the government make three thousand six hundred and twenty-two such requests to ISPs, and uh, three thousand four hundred of them were made by the police. If the government recognized this is an important means of uh, evidence uh, gathering, and uh, it's not regarded as interception, so it, the, the government uh, played tricks in two thousand sixteen. Because uh, it failed, the amendment failed to cover the areas need 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 that we need to cover, and uh, this therefore this amendment ordinance is uh, outdated, even if we viewed it uh, with the perspective of uh, 2016. And if not worth uh, for the question answers provided to Mr. Charles Moore, uh, we will not know the figures of uh, the requ of the request made and we. And uh, there are operations with uh, escape monitoring, which are manned the provisions to cover the interception of uh, telecommunications. This is important. This is uh, equally important as amendments to PTPO in the preamble of the uh, of the motion. There were serious instances. In 2017, the uh, REO lost uh, personal information, a uh, computer containing personal information of 3.8 million uh, voters. And so far, no official has been held accountable. Uh, in 2018, the Cafe Pacific only announced the loss of uh, 9 million passengers' information after five months. President, these are just more serious cases. There are many, many more. And we don't see uh, concrete action taken by the PVC commissioner to tackle, to handle the uh, wrongdoer. So is the PTPO useless or not good enough? Maybe both. The secretary is uh, re responsible for protecting our privacy. What we need to do 
is to enhance the deterrent effect of the uh, ordinance so that relevant organization will be uh, submit to the regulation of the ordinance instead of uh, going away uh, scot free. Charles Mark, I would like to thank Dr. President for moving this motion for an in depth discussion that, under the context of technology advancement and rapid growth, how do we uh, Enhance the privacy protection of Hong Kong people. In the past few years, the, large, the growing frequency of large scale data leakage incidents were the growing in scope. I'm not repeat those cases mentioned by Dr. Leung. For any sizable organization, they're still confronted with these information security risks, for example, public or private bodies and small and medium enterprises, NGO and non profit making, and hospitals. They need to deal with a lot of personal information. When there's handling and processing, there will be risk of theft. Well, the PCPO were enacted before the Internet area. A lot of the provisions are outdated. The Catholic Pacific incident illustrated the import that the penalties and insufficient deterrent of PCPO. So without clear notification responsibility and no info security standards, it's like the REO losing the laptop and even the voters' uh, registration. It likely that nobody will be held accountable. And the privacy provisioner are given limited hours under PCBO. There's no power to prosecute or to levy fines. So uh, what the it only can carry out compliance check and investigation and enforcement notice and in many cases have been accused of being a toothless tiger and for the first offenders these are all the limited options and they'll only be fined for fifty thousand dollars for repeat offenses. I agree with Dr. Lam's motion that need to uh, work uh, and dating responsibility for notification instead of the voluntary notification and depend on the scale of the incident to top up the penalties. The GPDR proposed if the data, data leakage may compromise personal safety and, and freedom, they need to uh, make it mandatory to notify within 70 hours. The SMEs and the business sector may have other opinions and want to get used to it and with the guidance education that their concerns can be addressed. But does that mean these are all adequate? Take reference with the GDPR enacted last May, besides the duty to notify users on toughen up the fines and on catching up tech development doesn't go nowhere enough. And we can see that um, tech development will bring to new privacy concern. The internet 10 years ago can come, is quite different today. In EU proposed reform of the privacy ordinance 2012 and passed the law in 2014 and implemented in 2018. And the Hong Kong government, the last time the large scale amendments was about 10 years in 2009. After the passage of GDPR, the France already have regulated agency have a uh, Find Google for 50 million euros. The reason is that um, they were uh, posting ads without authorization. So you can see that our regulatory regime and penalties are way insufficient. Rather than uh, making peaceful amendment, I think we need to have a comprehensive view in face of future development and also that we have to make sure the Hong Kong laws and um, can complement the world laws in one go in terms of improving the accountability and fairness. And after the Smart City Blueprint is launched, the government have a lot of issues, for example, using biometric recognitions and facial recognition on setting up the EIDs and also uh, call a smart post with ca cameras. Of course, they have a lot of good use. And ev the CCTVs are everywhere on our streets. There are cameras on our shops and cars. In government, have been installing a, a panoramic cameras in public venues. In, in China, sixty thousand surveillance, six six hundred million surveillance cameras, and strong facial recognition and AI technology, and also the social credit system to to uh, 
uh, surveyed at all to, uh, the uh, public. It's almost become a 1984 world. The UK is scrutinized having a case of a public challenging the police of using instant facial recognition software. Well, very likely, it would make the UK law enforcement agencies to deploy this instant facial recognition technology instantly. My in my amendment, I propose that you review the definition of personal data and whether the need to differentiate personal data that are sensitive from those, for example, race on DNA, ethnicity, and um, bio-identifiers, political stance, what we, we define as personal sensitive data. Well, in two we discussed it back in 2009 and nothing came out of it. Uh, for electronic payment, online shopping, and social media have become part of everyone's life. Smartphone apps, or the uh, operation system of the smartphone, we uh, know the location of the user, and even the smart bracelet will notice our location and our heartbeat. We keep on generating personal information, and before we press the consent, are we fully aware uh, that our data will be used this way? My members propose that the data c controllers may explain the privacy policy in the most direct and easy to understand way, so that um, the data subjects will freely given their explicit consent. Our digital footprints uh, by itself may not be significant, however, with uh, big data and uh, deep learning and AI, you can easily or more likely you can construct a person's profile, lifestyle habits, and its um, interpersonal relationships and the there are more and more companies deploy AI to help to improve services, whether for uh, making loans, virtual banks, and uh, CVs, and um, obtaining welfare payments from government. So the human-made decisions will leave it to the algorithm, and yet the AI cannot tell us why and how they arrive such decision, or why. Uh, our requests were refused. In other countries, for example, France, there are some cases which the system, for some reason, refused to uh, de deny the application of some group, but can't give a reason. On the AI and the uh, ethics, we need to do more analysis and understand it, so that the Hong Kong people in uh, would not have any problems with AI applications or compromise their interests. My amendment also mentioned that if the person information would require a consolidation or uh, automated decision making, they would have, have the right to explain the reason or refuse to be included. That on section 22 of the GBTR, which is a new provision, and also have a new Provision on AI <coughs> on, on cross border and transfer personal info have not been in place for two decades. The government have passed a consultancy study, have decided to put it on hold. And for the Greater Bay Area Development uh, Development Plan, need to uh, build the big data hub for GBA. For this kind of proposal, we feel we need to be very prudent. Especially what a PDBO <coughs> section thirty twenty three have yesterday enacted, the Hong, with the difference between the Hong Kong and mainland privacy protection laws, the mainland network security laws restrict the transmission of cross border data, such as the data from China must be stored within um, the mainland. Also, requests the network operators must comply with uh, national security and public security uh, technology requests. This go against the information freedom approach of Hong Kong. Some members, uh, which are targeted on the uh, storage of personal info, we must consider that, that the free flow of information is a core value. Some claim that uh, for INT we have to sacrifice some uh, privacy, which I would beg to differ. In back in 1995, we start drafting the PDBO. As of now, 
uh, we was a pioneer in Asia, but now we are uh, falling way behind. Therefore, we can't um, uh, raise our laws for innovation. We have to make sure our laws to catch up. And President, I submit help the members to support my amendment. Just Ms. Elizabeth Court, I first thank Ms. Priscilla Lam for moving the motion. At the end of uh, last year, there has been three major incidents of uh, person, uh, personal data leakage involving an uh, airliner, government, as well as uh, a hotel. And there was another incident uh, earlier this year. Just like previous incidents, it's uh, after some time that um, the incident was reviewed or it was submitted, and then um, the uh, Privacy Commissioner was notified. It shows that uh, there is a, um, how lackluster the uh, law is in relation to regulation. Data subject to who uh, are affected uh, don't really have and any way to protect themselves or seek redress. On a number of occasions, I have already pointed out the inadequacies of existing legislation. Say, for example, enterprises are allowed to excessively collect personal data. Privacy Commissioner cannot impose a deterrent um, penalty on these en uh, enterprises, and they have failed to take into account development in the uh, macro environment. With the GDPR, the uh, General Data Protection Regulation, uh, it was it came into effect in e EU earlier on, but in Hong Kong, there is no improvement whatsoever. So we do need to review the um, policy on protection of personal data and to improve our law to enhance protection. I have uh, made a number of suggestions in my amendment. Because of time to constraint, I would like to focus on protecting children's privacy. Because of the inadequacy of the law, well, um, adults uh, will have to take initiatives uh, themselves uh, to pro uh, to protect themselves. Say, for example, to change the uh, password regularly. However, when it comes to children, they may not be aware that they should um, ha enhance the protection against themselves. A lot of mobile um, devices have become digital uh, dummies for children. They have uh, access to the Internet, and there are lots of more devices uh, that can access the Internet. Well, ch children will use the Internet or talk to uh, their toys uh, to learn. But there are a lot of uh, hidden dangers behind these devices because of these uh, smart devices. Uh, they have a uh, camera, they have microphone, they, uh, they can uh, make recordings. A lot of people uh, can uh, upload the uh, conversation between the toy and the child onto the Internet. Well, some people may actually ask children about their names, the schools where they where they live, and about their daily life via these toys. And there is a chance that um, they can uh, make use of the record uh, the the um, video recording of uh, the of the children. All such information may be uploaded um, up on the cloud. If the information is hacked, then they would people would be able to locate the child. Uh, the ch the children may be kidnapped. They may make use of the images or, and the um, voice recordings of uh, children and use them uh, as a child pornography. When in, in overseas countries, uh, there is a pedophile who use who uses um, a cuddly toy to talk to children by uh, making obscene utterances to them and uh, ask ch um, children to um, pose in compromising pos um, positions. This is a huge infringement on children's privacy. Parents uh, find it appalling and shocking. We are not overcautious. Smart devices may easily be hacked. The server of VTech was hacked a number of years ago. 4.6 million um, 
account, uh, parents account names and uh, uh, records of uh, 6.3 million children have been compromised. There was an agreement with the U.S. authority. They have to pay um, a penalty of 650,000 U.S. dollars, and a number of security measures will have to be put had to be put in place. Apart from storage, we're also concerned that children may make use of uh, devices with internet access um, excessively. Well, there are a lot of apps and uh, websites that will collect uh, excessive uh, personal data. Perpetrators may, may, may make use of these websites to befriend children and ask children to divulge more personal data. The existing um, PDPO, uh, Personal Data, uh, da data and Privacy Ordinance, is useless in the protection of children's privacy. Say, for example, there is no restriction on um, the age of a child, uh, requiring a child under a certain age to be accompanied by parents. And there are no regulations to limit uh, the scope of data collected. There is no notification mechanism. As a result, enterprises will not take the initiative to notify should something happen. Data subject cannot uh, tr do something to protect themselves. Are there any solutions? Yes, it depends on whether the government is determined to do so. There are lots of uh, um, references can be drawn from other countries. Say, for example, in the in the U.S., uh, if you're under the age of 13, well, parents' consent will have to be obtained before you can collect um, information on age, pictures, uh, email address, telephone numbers. There is no protection in this regard whatsoever. There is no such awareness, so there is no dedicated uh, legislation. I say that uh, we should look into uh, legislating to limit uh, collection of uh, children's personal data. We do need policies. We do need um, measures. I think that majority of members will support a review of our ordinance and a proposal to enhance uh, law enforcement to better protect people's privacy. The ordinance was enacted a very long time ago. As to the scope of uh, the data to be collected, the uh, time frame for storage, any standards for uh, security, whether international standards will have to be met when the uh, data is properly deleted, what is the time frame for notification? Should there be a leakage and theft of personal data? All these will have to be covered by guidelines and legal provisions. Penalties will have to be high enough to, to be deterrent. I hope that uh, the debate will urge the administration to review the ordinance as soon as possible. Regarding Mr. Mock's amendment, we think that uh, it, we have to deal with it very uh, carefully. In relation to part three, that is uh, two, uh, grant data subjects the right to refuse the use of their personal data by data controllers for profiling by algorithm. We think that, uh, yes, that there is um, a need to uh, give a data subject the right to protect themselves. But the second part of it is um, the right to require data controllers to explain the relevant principles as well as um, uh, for automated decision making by art artificial intelligence. The, uh, the information technology sector uh, express reservation because uh, they think that this will impede the development of artificial intelligence and it will exceed the need to protect personal data. That's why we think that uh, we need to strike a balance between the promotion of development of INT uh, and protection of um, personal data. I so submit. Secretary for Constitutional and Mainland Affairs. I first of all would like to thank Ms. Priscilla Leung for moving this motion. Ms. 
Lance motion is to um, ask the, the government uh, to catch to catch up uh, with technological development and to enhance the protection of people's privacy. The amendments by Mr. Charles Mogg, Mr. Alvin Young, and Ms. Elizabeth Court uh, covers um, uh, matters relating to technology applications, say, for example, collection of personal data, use of personal data for profiling, the ISCO, um, internet privacy, as well as protection of children's privacy. I would like to first uh, state uh, existing um, situation and policy. In Hong Kong, personal data is protected by the PDPO. It was formulated in 1995 and came into effect in 1996. It was uh, monitored, promoted, and regulated um, and enforced by the Privacy Commissioners for Personal Data, which is an independent statutory um, organization. Well, um, since 2009, the government started looking into amending the PDPO. In 2012, there was an amendment. The amendment at that time was mainly uh, in relation to regulation of provision and use of personal data in direct marketing and to address problems of obtaining, disclosing, and selling our personal data without authorization. These amendments covered regulation of provision and use in direct marketing, provision of legal assistance to data subjects, and to impose a heftier penalty for repeated breach, breaches of enforcement notices. In this day and age, with the rapid development of information technology, it, the internet and mobile communications are prevalent. Are prevalent. Well, um, it has brought challenges to the protection of privacy, as members mentioned. In recent times, uh, there has been a number of uh, large-scale personal data leakage, which has drawn public attention as to whether there is uh, enough uh, pr protection on privacy. The government attached a lot of importance on this. With technological development, well, um, the trend of privacy breaches has changed from improper collection and use or direct marketing to something different in recent years. Say, for example, personal data leakage, uh, security loophole, as well as hacking. A number of uh, jurisdictions have reviewed and improved um, regulations in relation to privacy protection. In May 2018, there was uh, in the EU the um, General Data Protection Regulation. Revi uh, the revision was rather comprehensive. It covers a number of areas, including mandating uh, data users uh, to notify after a leakage, to authorize regulators uh, to impose penalty on uh, data users and data processors, and as well as direct regu regulation on data processor. Well, we we agree that uh, we do need to conduct studies on improvement of uh, regulation. We keep an open mind. The CMAB is working with the Privacy Commissioner to review the PDPO. We focus on a number of areas. I hope to hear members' views in the relation to these proposed amendments. First, whether to uh, establish a mandatory notification mechanism in relation to data, personal data leakage. Two, um, to set a time limit for uh, keeping of personal data. Three, to, uh, Im to impose um, pecuniary penalty on serious breaches of a, a personal data principles as well as regulation on data processor. On top of that, we noticed that in members' amendments, there are other areas covered. Say, for example, definition of personal data, the need to differentiate sensitive data, how to strengthen um, that sub data subjects' control on um, their information, uh, as well as uh, whether there is a need uh, to mandate privacy impact assessment, as well as safeguarding requirements of limitations of storage on the internet. We hope that um, we think that promotion at uh, the promotion of uh, privacy protection culture is very important. We will take into account what members uh, will say. We in this. Uh, in the, promo in the promotion of um, a good culture, the uh, Privacy Commissioner has been encouraging public and private organizations uh, to establish a good culture to help protect uh, pr personal privacy. I will listen to members before I speak. 
Mr. Christopher Chung. Mr. President, I speak in support of Mr. Priscilla Leung's uh, motion. That is, we need to enhance the protection of privacy. In recent years, we have met with a number of major data leakage incidents. The most shocking one was, of course, the one related to Cafe Pacific Airways. And in fact, uh, a government department, namely uh, the REO has also lost a computer containing uh, electors' information as well as um, a register of electors. And for the latter incident, it was withheld from the public for as long as two years. So we found it surprising that they took the matter so lightly and it has eroded our confidence in the government. So the motion is indeed a timely one because we need to take urgent action so as to protect our data. Now today, personal data isn't just about ID card number, date of birth or telephone number. In fact, uh, when we live in the age of the internet, in fact, uh, personal data is being applied every day, everywhere, like your traveling pattern, your consumption pattern, all such will be known on the internet. Everybody is uh, armed with a smartphone with a lot of uh, applications. Well, in fact, uh, you have to store uh, a lot of your uh, personal data on such applications like an electronic wallet or applications regarding uh, club membership, etc. So easily we're talking about um, a lot of entries in relation to our personal data. Now the um, Service providers are interested in collecting a huge volume of personal data of their clients. I think it's all about money. Well, in fact, the founder of Facebook uh, gave evidence at a uh, U.S. Congress uh, hearing. Well, I think he has said that he had to collect the information so as to make the uh, 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 to balance the books of his uh, company and then uh, to be uh, arriving at the highest level of uh, uh, profits, um, he will be, it will be important to collect personal data. In other words, uh, we'll be seeing more and more collection of more and more personal data covering more and more aspects. The administration must play its role of a regulator. Otherwise, we stand an increasing risk of uh, having our personal uh, data and privacy breached. Well, currently, as far as the government's protection of personal data is involved, I think uh, the government is relying on the relevant ordinance. Uh, however, the Personal Data Privacy Ordinance has had a history of 20 years. It is clear that it is outdated. As a result of the backwardness of the ordinance, uh, we haven't got um, the right stipulations and we don't mandate a notification of any data leakage and the commissioner hasn't got the uh, power to take the initiative to carry out investigations. So the commissioner has been regarded as a toothless tiger. And in fact, for the personal data privacy ordinance, uh, it was um, first introduced so as to allow us to conduct business with the European Union. Well, the EU has already uh, moved with the times and in fact they have already introduced the general data protection regulation so as to safeguard the personal data of EU citizens. Uh, it has greatly uh, raised the levels of penalties. Moreover, Uh, the fine would be 4% of the global turnover or 20 million euro dollars. And should there be a leakage uh, of data, the relevant data controller have to uh, notify the regulator within 72 hours. And they have to set up a post of data protection officer so as to deal with the relevant factors. In other words, the EU takes it seriously and understands the significance.
Well, data protection, personal data protection is a round-the-clock uh, job and the Hong Kong government must make sure that uh, we have to make sure that the um, personal data privacy ordinance is up to date. We can't afford to have a piece of legislation with minor amendments just a few years ago in its 22 years history. Well, Mr. Young has um, come up, uh, I mean, Ms. Leung's uh, four recommendations are timely and uh, they are most pertinent. If we are able to carry out the four recommendations, I'm sure we will make significant progress. But of course, uh, the emphasis should be uh, given to uh, enhancing the penalties and thus the deterrent effects. We have to make sure that uh, our businesses understand the need to protect personal data. Now, they make a profit out of it. Again, they have a social responsibility to make sure that the personal data will not be leaked. Otherwise, it will impact upon the citizens. So we need to enhance the penalties before we can make sure that people get the message right. That is, uh, we have to protect the personal data privacy. And then um, notification should be given as early as possible in the case of a uh, leakage. Mr. P Mr. Uh, Charles, Peter Mark, as well as Dr. Um, Honorable uh, Elizabeth Court have um, moved amendments. I support them. For Mr. Elvin Young's uh, proposal to um, revise the interception of communications and surveillance ordinance, I'm afraid this will affect the work of the law enforcement agencies. I object to that. Thank you. Mr. Kenneth Lang. In the year 2017 May, on a cover story of The Economist, we have been told that the most precious asset will no longer be rare earth or petroleum. Rather, it will be uh, a huge volume of data arising from our activities. Um, as a result of AI, it will be turned into something of great value, like the cookies, the websites that we have visited, as well as our GPS locations. Of course, as many members have said, our personal data privacy ordinance was introduced in 1995. Uh, at the time of introduction, it was uh, a very advanced move in Asia. But then 20, 24 years have already passed. Um, currently, we collect a huge amount of data and we apply AI uh, on a very extensive scale. We have to ask the question, is our ordinance uh, up to date? A lot of the colleagues have already referred to the GDPR, that is the General Data Protection Regulation. Surely, this is a good model that we can make reference to and we should. When we talk about the PDPO, Well, for the penalties, well, you have to go through the process of a complaint and investigation, and then the commissioner will issue uh, an enforcement notice. And then for the um, non-compliant enterprise fails to um, uh, meet the requirements in the enforcement notice, uh, then there will be a penalty, $50,000 for a first offense, and then $100,000 for a second one. Um, if you delay in taking remedial action by a day, uh, $1,000 in relation to the daily fine for a first offender. Otherwise, it will be $2,000 for a repeat offender. For a large enterprise, I don't think such a fine would be of any deterrent effect. In the case of the EU, the fine is much uh, larger in amount. It is $180 million Hong Kong dollars. I think uh, we can adopt the GDPD um, as the starting point for us to um, update our ordinance. And then I know we would like to introduce mandatory notification. In the case of the EU, you have to notify the regulator in 72 hours in the case of a data leakage. Uh, 
uh, you need to inform the EU regulator. In our ordinance, we don't have a mandatory notification mechanism. We only have guidelines for notification. Failure to um, follow the guideline will not attract any uh, penalties or consequences. I have talked to many uh, large uh, enterprises. I did ask them if it would be an onerous uh, uh, responsibility on them. Well, there were a number of uh, major data leakage. Uh, 9.4 million passengers involved in the six uh, case of data leakage. Say, for example, well, in fact, the scale of the data leak as well as the duration, say, since when the data has been uh, leaked, as well as how many people will be affected, they are of a, a substantial or, or extensive scale. When we talk about notification uh, within 72 hours, uh, what is the degree of the information to be disclosed? And what about post-notification? Um, does our data processor do anything about it? So for 72 hours notification requirement, would it be adequate or appropriate for people like us in this time zone? And then others are saying that we need to clarify the definition of personal data. Under personal data, we have so-called sensitive information, like um, our DNA uh, profile, uh, our political views, uh, trade union membership, etc. For such information, according to the EU's requirements, unless uh, indispensable, um, such sensitive information should not be processed as our personal data. So I just wonder if uh, we should also define our personal data into two categories. If we do so, does it mean that we will ban totally the processing of sensitive information, or can this be done under very limited circumstances? Again, it is something we need to consider. Now I come to another issue, and uh, it is sort of giving me a headache. Now, according to Section 33, we are able to transfer the data overseas for the purpose of storage. but. Um, this particular section has never been brought into operation for 20 years. Now, uh, my understanding is that uh, this is not quite um, workable. But then, similar uh, restrictions have already been introduced in other places. So I wonder why we cannot um, introduce or bring into operation this particular restriction concerning transfer of data. And then I would also like to comment on the risk involved in uh, children uh, surfing the internet. Now, other than revising the law, I think we need to have a paradigm shift before we can make sure that our privacy will be uh, upheld in this world. My experience is that you should never uh, expose our young children uh, to the electronic gadgets um, at too early a stage. Uh, they shouldn't spend too much time on the gadgets, and they should focus more on uh, physical exercises. Uh, a lot of medical research studies have already said that too, uh, an exposure that is too early would become a problem. Mr. Kenslow. President, I'm grateful to Mr. Jane, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Priscilla Leung, uh, for moving this motion. At this um, IT era, people's um, preferences and uh, consumption pattern will fetch a price. The data bank of uh, the commercial uh, sector are getting larger and larger, and the risk of uh, personal data being leaked is um, getting ever higher. So how will the data user uh, safeguard the privacy of the data subject? It is uh, an interesting subject, and therefore, I have uh, moved uh, motions um, to safeguard uh, or move uh, raise questions uh, regarding the uh, safeguarding of uh, personal data. Um, 
in line with uh, the world trend. In Hong Kong, we've seen the uh, data bre breaches. Um, TransUnion um, has um, the problems. Uh, five uh, million people's uh, data were leaked. Um, Cathay Pacific uh, permitted um, data breach uh, affecting uh, nine million or so people. Uh, information like data, um, credit card information, residential addresses, uh, ID and mobile phone numbers um, were leaked. Cathay, um, to our surprise, uh, waited uh, for seven months before um, notifying the members of the public. This has uh, raised uh, global concerns. The government departments uh, were not entirely blameless. In 2017, uh, after the CE election, the REO uh, lost uh, two lap um, laptops, uh, three million registered voters' information uh, was leaked. In April this year, it was at exposed uh, by the media that um, the REO lost uh, 8,000 or so uh, information um, was leaked involving the, uh, the names um, and the personal data of um, the voters. I've um, dug up the information and there were listed companies um, that leaked um, the, the data um, the Hong Kong broadband uh, leaked uh, data involving uh, 380,000 users. Uh, it took them two days um, to, to make the announcement. Uh, FreeTech um, lost um, 5 billion uh, customers' information. The PCPD has been encouraging the um, companies to make the notification as soon as possible. But we are relying solely on the self-discipline of um, the, the corporations so that there is no time frame for a notification if they are um, dragging their feet and if they are pulling the, the wool over the eye of um, the people, uh, then the PCPD uh, cannot do uh, anything about it. It's just like a toothless tiger. Now, as a result of um, the data breaches, um, it highlights um, the um, the um, the problem with um, the the PDPO um, and is uh, being outdated. I agree with um, Dr. Professor Leung and Mr. Charles Mock uh, that uh, we should take reference from the GP GDPR of the European Union and come up with um, a comprehensive notification system. And we have to to um, expressly provide that a notification has to be made within a certain period of time. Under the, the law, uh, Mr. President, the breaches of um, the data principle doesn't constitute an offence, and the PCPD uh, doesn't have any uh, power to um, impose punitive measures. It's only um, criminal offences that are committed that um, that the case will be referred uh, to the police. Um, the offend the, the fine is um, $50,000 and two years imprisonment. The number of successful convictions has been very low. Over the past three years, uh, 1,800 um, to 3,000 cases were recorded. Uh, four cases were recorded in 2017 or five in 2016. In neighboring jurisdictions in Macau, they have um, the equivalent of um, PCPD, and in Singapore they have um, they they have the power to impose some um, administrative um, fines. I think um, the PCPD should be uh, given the administrative power to impose penalties and instruct or, or um, make sure that um, the personal data will be safeguarded um, by the private companies. In relation to uh, Mr. Charles Mock's point, I'd like to say that as AI is um, getting more and more popular, it is time that the administration look at um, the, the new products. The mobile uh, devices uh, can collect um, personal data, and there should be some 
restrictions or some supervision of the collection of personal data from the mobile devices. The government um, should strike a balance between um, the quality of service and the um, safeguarding of public uh, personal data. We are at an IT era, and this is something that, that is worth um, exploring. Mr. James Tell, President, Dr. Pusinello moved this motion uh, to safeguard uh, personal privacy, and Mr. Alvin Young uh, suggests that um, the ICSO uh, be extended to cover um, the um, the the um, apps that I was apps. Um, BPA, Mr. Christopher Jung, objects to this because he's uh, worried about um, the law enforcement. I feel rather disappointed. The government um, enacted the PDPO back in 1996 under the colonial era, and they were forced um, into it. They were not particularly interested in um, putting forward the protection of um, personal privacy. The EU uh, said that without any um, pr protection of uh, personal data, Hong Kong will not be able to, to exchange any information like uh, the banking data. Over the past 20 or so years under the SAR government, the government never interested was never interested in protecting personal data. They've uh, never kept the ordinance under review. It's only when a major incident happened that they would be tinkering around the edges. They never thought about the areas where there is um, a lack of protection for personal data. In terms of uh, commercial behavior, in terms of um, the, the data possessed by the government, if there are any um, conflicts, how can they strike a proper balance? And they never intend to mount any consultation. They never moved in this direction. Now, referring to the ICSO and the protection of uh, personal telecommunication and the um, enforcement of the law, the government tends to be very quick in um, seeking power, and they take it for granted that uh, personal privacy is um, breached. Lun Kuo Hong uh, won a court proceeding, and the court um, forced the government's hands and came up with um, the, the legislation. It was against this background that um, the, the ordinance came about. I'm not sure how many people in Hong Kong would be talking on the phones. Uh, people don't tend to talk on the phone that much these days because um, you need to um, talk to someone in a situation where you will not be affecting other people and where you will not be overheard by others in your conversation. So on the MTR, uh, people will be tapping away on their phone, and they are using these instant messaging devices or applications to deliver the messages. If I phone you, uh, then I should uh, proceed my phone call with the WhatsApp before I would uh, place the call, um, thinking that I might um, disrupt your life. Now here, under this ICSO, if you're making a phone call, and if you're, you you um, try to tap a phone call, you have to um, seek permission from the court. If the police were to get hold of um, your, all your WhatsApp um, records uh, from the uh, service providers or the voice uh, recordings um, in the WhatsApp, if the police were to um, lay their hands on, on all of these uh, records, there would be um, no um, protection as high as um, the, the interception of telecommunications. The, um, the supervision uh, will be lower uh, than um, the, the interception of telecommunication. This is an anomaly. Now for emails or WhatsApp or Telegram or indeed any inst Instagram or any instant messaging mobile applications, the protection 
um, is not um, pro proportionally high, telephone calls um, they they will enjoy higher uh, protection, and this is and not and normally this is, um, this is um, um, not. Um, in line with our expectation, we've asked the administration to make the changes for years. We told the administration that uh, when the law enforcement agencies are gaining access to the um, messages uh, from the mobile mobile messaging apps, um, I asked them for the um, statistics. They said they haven't got the statistics, and they said that um, it's got nothing to do with um, law enforcement. I told them that. Um, the collation of um, statistics um, is relevant, but they're not collecting the, the data because they don't really want to tell the public that they and I, um, the law enforcement agencies, are gaining access uh, to the messages in our mobile um, apps. There is a lack of protection in this regard at all, President. Unlike other jurisdictions, we are bucking the trend. This is easily explained because the administration feels that um, they can they inf they can enforce law in whatever whatever way they like. The fugitive offenders amendment bill is a case in point. In Hong Kong, they feel that the police are will not be abusing the information that they gather. So the uh, requirement um, doesn't have to be as high as um, the interception of uh, telecommunication. They're very quick at um, securing the power, and they're not offering the proportionate um, protection for the members of the public. This is what the uh, uh, Carrie Lam government is doing. Mr. Ray Chen, well, in relation to the uh, incidents of leakage uh, of personal data in 2018, well, um, in April there was uh, a lot of leakage, and then PayMe uh, has also got um, the email accounts being uh, hacked into, and then six uh, Airways also lost uh, 9.4 million passengers' uh, data, and then for TransUnion, again it is easy for you to look up the information. Um, in fact, uh, Paul Chen, the FS, as well as Carrie Lam, uh, were affected. So from time to time, we encounter something similar in terms of the scale and the impact. Now, we have innovation technology. We have the Internet of Things. So it's easier and easier for people uh, to get others' uh, personal data as assets so uh, enterprises can um, do marketing by analyzing the um, preferences of their clients. Now, the era of 5G is on the doorstep. Now, the refrigerators, even a dustbin, can have the function of sending out information. So there will be real-time recording of your habits, and then the information will be sent back to the companies so as to adjust the service. Well, the P DPO has been in place for over 20 years. When the law was first drafted, uh, were, we, um, were we able to anticipate what would happen? Well, in fact, somebody um, has uh, encountered a problem. That is, uh, his ID card number as well as other uh, personal data was lost, and then the criminal made use of the information to apply for a new credit card, and then um, the victim tried to get help from the police or the commissioner of personal data privacy, but he didn't get um, much, uh, didn't get anywhere. Now, in fact, uh, we are living in the era of 5G, and yet the law uh, has a history of 20 years only. Some uh, enterprises would like to personalize or customize their service, uh, but then they're not too sure whether it would be permitted under the PDPO. I think uh, in this way, um, the service cannot be uh, sort of uh, improved. Um, Somebody would like to get the expressions, facial expressions, uh, via the webcam of a smartphone. Uh, 
um, in this way, um, the marketing strategies can be adjusted by having instant uh, feedback of the um, reaction of the clients. But they're not too sure whether this is going to breach the um, PDPO, and so they dare not um, develop such an application. This is but the uh, tip of the iceberg. On the one hand, we would like to develop big data. On the other hand, we are afraid that um, uh, we are afraid of breaching the law. So uh, I think what we have to do uh, is to make sure that um, we are up to the date. In fact, currently, the regulatory uh, scope is very wide. Well, in fact, we need to um, notify the clients. We need to look at the extraterritorial effects. Now, in fact, for the um, I'm referring to the GDPR. Uh, it is very extensive. In fact, our local enterprises will also be affected, and they may be subject to penalties. And we are talking about over a million euros in terms of the fine to be imposed. Like uh, last year, there was a serious case of data leakage on the part of CX. Um, 9.4 million passengers were involved, including their ID card numbers. And the information has been downloaded. And it isn't just about Hong Kong passengers, but also passengers all around the world. At that time, there was this question, that is the um, PDPO uh, is toothless. But then for the GDPR, um, it carries uh, proof. Uh, it, it can carry penalties, and at that time, it was said that perhaps um, there may be a fine of over four billion uh, euros as a result of late notification. Well, the data sub subject may not uh, receive the fine in return, but at least it is a matter of uh, uh, making them less aggrieved, and there will be deterrent effect. But then the um, it, it isn't really that. Um, but then the um, incident took place in May last year before the. Um, coming into force of the GDPR, and so uh, Cafe Pacific uh, was not uh, sort of punished. But in fact, that incident affected many Hong Kong people. And at that time, the CS4A, Matthew Cheung, has said that he would uh, make reference to the overseas uh, experience, and he would consider tightening up the uh, PDPO and making reference to the GDPR, including other things. Um, and he would also consider whether they're going to introduce um, the similar provisions of the uh, GDPR. In fact, the Office of the Commissioner, the Privacy Commissioner for Personal Data, has always been criticized for lacking powers, no investigative powers, no powers to impose penalties, and um, no powers to impose a fine. So for a private organization, it may um, disregard the Privacy Commissioner. Of course, we have the so-called compliance check, but then it's not going to hurt the enterprises. On the other hand, for the EU, it can um, punish uh, any enterprise in the world. So here, I would like to pose a question to the CS4A. He has told us that uh, we are going to tighten up the uh, PDPO, but then six months have already passed, and I wonder if... Um, um, uh, we want to know if uh, anything will come out of it. It seems that it has gone into the bottomless uh, pit. I think the government has said that it won't be an ostrich. Uh, it won't bury its head in the sand anymore. So again, this piece of legislation uh, has been in this form for 20 years. So the government should actually tell us what is meant by tightening up the um, penalties. Uh, are you going to leave, uh, drop the matter? Mr. Tommy Chang. Um, technology is advancing rapidly, and of course, we have globalization of our world. Uh, I think it is a big challenge for us to protect personal data. Everybody is trying to adjust to the new changes. Well, um, the uh, General Data Protection Regulation was introduced last year, and the Hong Kong government is studying the impact of the GDPR on Hong Kong as well as the rest of the world. In fact, the Office of the Commissioner um, is also uh, carrying out a study on 
the need to review the personal data privacy ordinance, like the notification mechanism, duration of storing the data, uh, a, a enhanced level of data security, and whether the commissioner should be given more powers and whether it can be empowered to impose fines. Well, in fact, uh, I know that the office is carrying out a review. I think we should wait for the job to be completed before uh, we uh, do anything about it. Otherwise, it's a matter of bypassing the uh, commissioner. For the various uh, proposals in the uh, motion and the amendment uh, proposed, um, the Liberal Party has reservation. We need to be very careful. As a political party representing the business sector, uh, personal data, of course, is important, but then we have to strike a balance between protection of privacy and uh, doing business. The Liberal Party is of the view that if we hastily introduce a piece of legislation uh, in a broad brush approach, it would not be good because it will impose um, f a further uh, compliance cost on the uh, businesses, and it means that the um, Technology startups will be denied uh, the room to um, survive, and some of the enterprises may choose to leave Hong Kong. And I'm afraid that this will erode our competitive edge. Now, in fact, personal data has to be collected by enterprises. There's a genuine need, say, for example, verifying the identity so as to make sure that the concessions will not be abused. I don't think we should restrict the use of personal data. I think we need to be more pragmatic and we should make sure that the enterprises know how to uphold the high standards required and make sure that the uh, data will be protected. And we should also help these enterprises to um, uh, introduce a system to protect their personal data. In this way, to the SMEs, which lack a lot of resources, it will be more realistic in terms of the assistance offered. In this way, we can prevent the risk of uh, data leakage. On the other hand, I understand that in 2013, the BU Hong Kong was entrusted by the Office of the Privacy Commissioner to carry out a survey on privacy awareness. Well, over half of the interviewees were worried. That is, um, they were afraid that social media would be a channel for the leakage of personal data. But much fewer respondents would take action to avoid their personal data being shared. In other words, um, the citizens know about the risk, but they do nothing about it. Well, as we know that it's easy for us to download applications onto our smartphones and for enterprises to collect personal data, usually we will be told about um, the expected uses of the kind of personal data to be collected. I think few people would read carefully the terms and conditions. In other words, uh, we know nothing about the potential use of our personal data. I think data users uh, have a duty to uphold the um, integrity, but at the same time, the data subjects have to make sure that they can protect and they do protect their own privacy. Yes, from time to time, the Privacy Commissioner holds um, talks for us to enhance our awareness and make sure that we know that it is an important issue. And we can also make use of the online resources. Um, however, uh, the talks are not um, sort of uh, well known to everybody. So I think we need to enhance the publicity. Madam Deputy, um, statutory safeguards would be important, but then public education is important for the general public as well as the businesses. I think uh, this is the first line of defense. Thank you. Mr. Horace Jung. Madam Deputy, Jackie Jung. Um, Hong Kong singer had um, roving concerts um, all over China, and they all these concerts were played to um, full house. The police at um, Jackie Chung's uh, concerts um, did uh, benefit to, did benefit um, a great deal because by the end of um, last year there were. Um, 
many suspects um, who were arrested. There was one um, who uh, was on the wanted list for 10 years. Um, the netizens uh, gave um, Jackie Chung um, a uh, an analysis. Um, his um, the um, sleuth um, for the um, fugitives. Now, the um, peop the suspects were arrested uh, because um, there is um, the this face recognition um, system and. Quite inevitably, um, this has uh, given rise to some um, controversy over privacy. Madam Deputy, the Bangladesh is taking full advantage of uh, facial recognition and um, the the um, technological devices to uh, crack down on crimes. Um, the IT um, veteran, uh, the U.S. is bucking the trend. Uh, Silicon Valley, um, California. On the 14th of May, uh, they have enacted an act to prohibit um, the police and government departments um, to use uh, facial recognition to keep people's activities under surveillance. This is the, the first uh, city um, that um, introduced this ban, and this is the first city globally. Now, for California, uh, this practice uh, has given rise um, to controversy over the balance between uh, privacy and crime detection. Now, from the attitude on the part of uh, California regarding facial recognition, there are two schools of thought uh, here. The extensive use of facial recognition um, is um, regarded by some as uh, an infringement of privacy, but overemphasis on privacy uh, would um, be cutting, um, cutting off um, the um, the face despite the nose. I think in the twenty first century, as um, the IT is um, rapidly developing, should we use um, facial recognition as a means? I don't think th this um, should be there should be any debate anymore, because everyone has um, a mobile handset. And with uh, WhatsApp, uh, instant messaging, a uh, GPS, um, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and so on, all, all of these uh, will record uh, every single bit of our life. And in a developed uh, society like Hong Kong, these are the things that are uh, indispensable, and they will betray our privacy and our movement on a daily basis. This is quite an inevitable thing. The California Assembly. Um, endorse the prohibition of uh, facial recognition, uh, I think it is a, a rather passive move. We are talking about uh, 5G these days, and this is taking uh, mankind into a, a high-speed um, system. Um, the cloud computing um, big data, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not unfamiliar with these um, terms, but they will be the dominant features of a future life. So from a... Um, Proactive um, point of view, I think we should discuss how we can legislate to protect um, privacy in in the midst of uh, rapidly developing technology. So I think um, Dr. Priscilla Leung's motion is um, really meaningful, and this is something that that is food for thought. Recently, the Hong Kong SL government and also the public and private sectors have um, committed data breaches. There were many instances. Members before me uh, have already spoken on them. I don't propose to repeat them. These um, data breaches would um, upset people, but indirectly, these um, makes us makes it plain that um, the um, PDPO is so uh, lame. The uh, PCPD is uh, more like a paperless tiger. So the thing is uh, how we should. Um, Improve the PDPO and how she will empower the um, PCPD. This is an important subject. In original motion on the 25th of um, May uh, last year, um, the uh, GDPR was enacted in Europe. I have done some homework.
And I try to compare the GDPR and the uh, PDPO in Hong Kong. There is certainly a lot that we can learn from. Under the GDPR, all public sector companies and enterprises that um, store a lot of public um, data should appoint a um, DPO, Data Protection Officer. If in the processing of the data, um, the uh, personal privacy would be a risk, uh, then there should be um, a DPIA, Data Protection Impact Assessment. If there are any data breaches within 72 hours, there should be a notification. In Hong Kong, this is entirely on a voluntary basis. There are a couple more points that should be uh, taken into account, but in the interest of time, I don't think I can go into detail about them. But I hope that the um, Bureau will take this um, for reference. The PDPO is um, full of flaws. And I think that we should um, upgrade um, the, the robustness of um, the ordinance. We have to uh, keep pace with time and keep up with um, technology. Thank you. Dr. Lo Wai Kwong. Madam Deputy, I'm grateful to a DPA colleague, a BPA colleague, uh, Dr. Priscilla Leung, for moving this motion um, for us to keep up with um, the IT development and safeguarding pop, uh, privacy. This is something dear to everybody's heart. I'm sure that all of us will subscribe to this motion. Now, this is um, IT development is a double-edged sword, as um, the internet, big data, AI, uh, and so on are developing rapidly. The members of the public can enjoy all the convenience arising out of it, like instant messaging and the free flow of information, paperless um, transaction, and so on. But this uh, also gives rise to many problems, uh, like um, the um, protection, uh, the, the risk of um, data breaches, and the difficulty in protecting data. In the public and private sector, we've seen that data breaches on many occasions. A notable example is um, the auto person in 2009. It was discovered that they have been uh, selling the personal data of cardholders um, affecting 2.4 million people. The REO admitted that uh, 3.7 million voters' personal data uh, were leaked as, re as a result of the loss of uh, computer. CX um, said that uh, 9.4 million passengers' data were um, being access to without an authorization. And TransUnion um, in 2018 was um, exposed to have um, security um, loopholes affecting 5 million or so people. Now, all these um, data breaches involve um, an awful number of people, and the sensitive data are really enormous. The companies concerned um, were not prepared to, to make a public announcement um, until after being exposed by the media. Now, all these incidents uh, can happen anywhere, anytime. The instant messaging devices or apps like WhatsApp, it was discovered that there were security um, loopholes. The hackers can uh, gain access um, to the surveillance um, software and gain access to uh, people's um, bank account details. 1.5 billion people are affected globally. Now, this um, PDPO uh, was uh, enacted in 1996. It wasn't. It was only uh, amended in um, 2012 regarding um, the use of personal data in um, direct marketing, and this is not enough um, to um, protect the personal data in this IT age. In this IT era, the members of the public will rely more and more on the online services. Like we are uh, developing the, um, the smart city in Hong Kong, one of the most important initiatives is um, to um, develop the EID. People can use um, the EID to use government and commercial services. The other thing is the development development of um, electronic uh, payment system to minimize some um, cash transaction. As um, the Greater Bay Area 
is um, developing. There will be more and more interaction between the two places. The EID and the electronic payment system will, in the long run, get connected with um, the mainland system. All of this show that there is an urgency for us to improve and upgrade the protection of um, personal data and all, all the associated policies. Madam Deputy, 22 members by the end of April conducted a duty visit to um, the Yangtze River. 22nd of April was the last day. We went, went to Alibaba, Alibaba headquarters in Hangzhou and uh, had a briefing uh, from the um, partners under the stewardship of uh, Ma Yun, Jack Ma. In 1999, they um, started promoting e-commerce and the exhibition covered the rural areas. They pro they popularized some um, finance and and IT. They intru introduced uh, the Taobao um, website, and it was really interesting. Jake Ma led the team and built built up a system that po put emphasis on um, the customers. And he realized the dreams at that time, people's uh, livelihood, w lifestyle, and the business transaction were changed, and there was a new culture established. They have uh, 100,000 staff members, and um, the um, trading volume is 1 trillion US dollars. The uh, top echelon of um, Alibaba uh, has um, the city brain platform through big data analysis. They massively improved from the traffic control system and alleviated the traffic congestion. Jake Ma uh, spent time to talk to the delegation and shared with us um, his uh, really wonderful ideas about uh, big data. Jake Ma said that Hong Kong has a very um, rich Data database. We have um, a lot of human resources. We have to seize the big data and build um, the city brain for Hong Kong. Madam Deputy, I cited these um, snippets of um, the the visit to illustrate that um, big data and AI will play a significant role in the 21st century in developing IT um, and the protection of uh, privacy. I think we have to strike. Um, the most appropriate balance, Madam Deputy. So I speak. I support uh, Dr. Priscilla Leung's motion. The Senate member wish to speak. If no two members of the Senate can vote, you can vote. Dr. Priscilla Leung, you have five minutes to speak. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I'm grateful to 12 members who have uh, spoken on this um, motion regarding um, the enhancement of um, people's privacy. I listen attentively to all the speeches. Basically, they, their speeches are revolved around the protection of people's privacy. Mr. Elvin Young made the point about um, the ICSO and the, his uh, made the recommendation for um, amendments um, to the ICSO. Now, there are some reservations expressed by other members because they haven't got the time to um, have any discussion over this uh, recommendation. Mr. Charles Mark's um, speech or amendments I think I can uh, subscribe to them. There are some members, however, who refer to um, one three, granting data subjects the right to refuse uh, or uh, automated decision making by AI and the right to require data controller to explain the relevant principles. Some have uh, reservations about it. I am a data um, owner, and I would give um, advice um, to victims from time to time. I 
I would resist um, the idea that um, my data is used without my authorization. So I tend to agree with uh, Mr. Charles Mock's amendment. I, I think the development of um, IT should be balanced against uh, my personal privacy. We have to strike a balance somewhere. I have to point out that I fully appreciate that um, we need to have um, a happy balance there, and I think we should uh, leave it up to the PCPD to do the consultation as to, I mean, he doesn't say must, uh, he merely says um, there should be. Now, it is not shall, he doesn't use the word shall. Now, he's merely saying that um, there should be uh, some balance. Um, the um, data controllers can can choose not to disclose um, the information that is uh, commercially sensitive. I hope that there would be a balance to be struck. I am not sure whether all the amendments I will go through, uh, but I'd like to say that I have had um, some discussion with the PCPD, and he said that um, this is a step in the right direction. So uh, my wordings are not uh, specific. I hope that um, members from different political persuasion would support uh, my proposal. Now, all these um, amenders, they may um, differ among themselves, and I hope that uh, even with um, the endorsement of some of the uh, amendments, um, this will not affect uh, your support of my original motion. This will send a clear message to the government that as um, IT is uh, rapidly developing and as um, all these uh, instances of data breaches over the past years, over the past few years, I think uh, we cannot be stuck uh, in, um, in this um, day and age. We have to move an amendment to the ordinance. There is another amendment by Dr. Elizabeth Court. She mentioned uh, protection for children. I fully subscribe to, to this direction. And I, I think that all these amendments uh, will improve uh, my original motion. I support all of them, uh, with exception of uh, Mr. Alvin Young, so which I will um, abstain from uh, voting on it. I hope that this is good for reference uh, for members. Secretary for Constitutional and Mainland Affairs, Madam Deputy, we have listened carefully to the very valuable views of 15 members on the original motion and the amendments. As I said at the outset, the government takes seriously protection of private data. I agree that we should move with the times in terms of protection of data, given the development of technology. That is why we are reviewing the DPO together with the PCPD. When I spoke just now, I mentioned that we will go in four directions. So first, let me share with you how the, this review will be taken forward using these four directions. First, with regard to the mandatory notification system for leakage, the review would mean that there should be notification to the PCPD if there is any breach so that the PCPD can monitor how the organizations tackle the breach and then the organization can also seek guidance from the PCPD. We have to consider the threshold for notification, meaning when an organization meets up with a type or scale of breaches, then notification has to be done and whether the threshold should be the same for different types and scales of breaches and also the time limit for making notification and also the contents and also the format for making notification should also be looked into. And secondly, the time for retaining information. If the time of retention is long, there will be a bigger risk of breaches. Considering the nature of service and the unique needs of different organizations, we might not want to come up with a uniform requirement. So we will be asking the data users to set up a clear policy for retention of personal data, including setting the longest time possible. And also, when data is collected, there, this should be clearly told to the subject. And also, we should 
separate the different categories of information to be retained, and there should be different times for retaining such information, and also the legal requirements for retaining information. All that should be explained to the data subjects. Number three, if there is a serious breach of the DPP and whether fines should be levied, we are looking into the direction of imposing administrative fines on such cases. And we are going to look at the level and the amount to be levied. And we'll also have to look at the possible impact on business and also the compliance cost. And we'll have to see whether there should be an appeal mechanism so that the organizations can appeal against the decisions of the PCPD. We believe the PCPD should also launch a guideline to list the criteria and uh, principles for levying the fines. And also, with regard to direct regulation of data controllers, the present PDPO puts the onus of protecting personal data on the user. And there should be a contract um, allowing the user to make sure that personal data will be kept safe. With technology development, um, it is quite often the case that cloud service suppliers and other contractors will be given the job of processing personal data, so there are a greater risk of breaches. We are looking into the direction of uh, levying legal responsibilities directly on the controllers or the contractors, so that um, the when there, whenever there is a breach, the controllers will have to report to the P. CPD and also notify the subjects. Now, these are the four directions that we are looking into. These are our considerations. The CMAB and the PCPD, when we consider these directions, will make reference to the relevant laws in the different jurisdictions, including the GDPR of the European Union and also the personal data protection laws of Canada, Singapore, Australia, and New Zealand. We'll also look at the actual situation in Hong Kong, balance the interests of different stakeholders, and amend and perfect the PDPO. So we thank members for your views. We understand that narrowing down the PDPO will affect the compliance cost of user users. And we are going to strike a balance between the protection of privacy, um, free flow of information, and also businesses. Just now, some members talked about education. Well, but th the amendments will not be the only way to protect personal data. We can also rely on public education in order to raise the awareness of public and private organizations. In terms of the policies and security measures, the PCPD is taking a result-oriented approach in implementing the law, and it is also promoting best practices and providing support and guidelines to organizations. In 2018, we revised the Policy Management Program, a guide on best practices, so that we help different organizations to set up a good management system. We will also act according to the PDPO in order to inspect the organizations using personal data, and we make proposals to them. Recent reports included the tuition schools, property agencies, and also tourist agencies. In 2019, the PCPD will also be inspecting such systems of employment-related organizations. Through these inspections, the um, commissioner can make proposals to the sectors involved. And in terms of publicity in 2019 to 2020, our main point is to enhance the awareness of different organizations. We are going to conduct training, and we will also send people to chambers of commerce in order to help them understand the ordinance, and we are going to issue sector guidelines. The protection of the ordinance also applies to children. This is the uh, amendment moved by Ms. Elizabeth Quatt. In fact, in many jurisdictions, including Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and Singapore, their um, laws would apply to all 
data subjects and they do not separate uh, different groups of people according to their age. And the EU GDPR also require that if they provide online services to children under 16, there should be the consent of the parents. And in England, the age uh, threshold is 13. Right now, the U.S. has this Children's Online Privacy Protection Act to control the collection of information from children online, but this is not a common approach. The PCPD understands that we need to protect the personal data of children, so we are going through uh, publicity and education in order to protect children. We do not have any plans to uh, set up any particular law to protect children online. And some members mentioned Section 33 of PDPO, uh, so that there will be regulation on transfer of uh, information across boundaries, and uh, we need to do preparation for that. We have already done assessment on the business environment, and it's said that SMEs in general may not have enough resources in order to do any professional assessment on the relevant laws in the other countries. And the PCPD is asking their legal advisor in order to look into implementation of Section 33, and they will make reference to relevant laws of other jurisdictions. According to DPP3, the um, transfer objective must be aligned with the original uh, purpose of collection, and you must have the consent of the data subject. Some members mentioned the ICSO and its scope, and whether it is progressing um, in line with present technology. According to the Security Bureau, in previous uh, Bill's committee discussions on amending ICSO and also on other occasions, the administration has said very clearly that ever since the ordinance came into operation in 2006, it's still providing very effective support to LEAs. It is said that there must be authorization before there can be any act of interception, and LEAs must act according to the rules. And if there is any um, communication through telecommunication means, and if this is intercepted um, during transmission, then it will amount to an act of interception. So no matter what technology is used, if the relevant act can will amount to the act of interception under the law, then there must be authorization by panel judges or there must be a prescribed authority. And it, at every stage, uh, there will be serious monitoring of the work of LEA and the CICS will make sure that the um, LEAs comply with the law. I'd like to thank all 50 members who have spoken together with the PCPD. We will carefully make reference to your views and we'll also look at the relevant laws in other jurisdictions and complete our review of the PDPO as soon as possible. And then in due course, we will consult the relevant stakeholders and also the relevant panels of LegCo. So I speak, President. I now call upon Honorable Elvin Young to move an amendment. President, I move my amendment. I propose to question to you that Honourable Elvin Young's amendment be passed. Mr. Elvin Young claims the division, and bell will ring for five minutes. Oh, will um, the secretary please put down the placard on uh, Ms. Andrew Wen's desk? Please put down the placard on Ms. Andrew Wen's desk. <laughs> 
Hoji Bilku. Will members please proceed to vote? Please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting now ends. I display the results. FC 26 present, 12 4, 3 against, 10 abstentions. GC 27 present, 23 4, 2 against, 2 abstentions. The question is not agreed by a majority of each of two. The two groups of members who are present are declared the amendment negatived. President, I propose that um, in relation to further divisions in relation to this uh, motion of um, protecting people's privacy, the um, voting should take place one minute um, after the bell has been rung. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Those against? I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members who are present and declare the motion passed. For further divisions regarding this motion and the amendments, uh, voting should take place one minute after the bell has rung. Mr. Charles Mock. President, I move my amendment. I propose the question to you that Honourable Charles Mock's amendment be passed. Mr. Charles Mock claims the division bell will ring for one minute. Mr. Jeremy Tam, Declaration President. I am um, in the employ of um, Cathay Pacific. Please proceed to vote. Please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting now and I display the results. FC 29 present, 10 4, 18 absten abstention, 27 present for GC, 13 4, 3 against, 11 abstentions. This Motion is not agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members who are present. I declare the amendment uh, negatived. Dr. Elizabeth Court, uh, you may move your amendment. President, I move my amendment. I propose the question to you that um, Dr. Quart's amendment be passed. With those in favour, Mr. Alvin Young claims the division. The bell will ring for one minute. Please check the votes. If there are no questions, voting now ends and display the results. FC 30 present, 16 4, 13 abstentions. GC 27 present, 16 4, 1 against, 10 abstentions. The question is agreed by majority each of the two groups of members who are present. I declare the amendment passed. Dr. Priscilla Leung, you have um, 52 seconds. President, I move this motion because uh, there was very limited time at panel discussion. This is a matter of direction. I've talked with um, the PCPD. Uh, the important thing is to enhance the protection 
and to have some deterrent measures. I hope that you members will support my original motion to bring pressure to bear on the administration to amend the PC PTPO um, to bring it up to date. Uh, thank you, President. I now put the question to you that the motion moved by Dr. Priscilla Leung as amended by uh, Dr. Ernest report be passed. But those in favor, please raise their hands. Mr. Alvin Young claims the division. The bell will ring for one minute. Please proceed to vote. Please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting now ends. I display the results. GC, um, FC, uh, 30 present, 24, 1 against, 6 abstentions. GC, 27 present, 21, 4, 6 abstentions. The question is agreed by majority of each of the two groups of members who are present. I declare the motion as amended passed. The German motion under Rule 16.4 of the Rule.